like to extend my sincere gratitude and appreciation to Dr. Greg Mills and the Brainhurst Foundation for organizing this important African Security Dialogue Conference in our country and in our capital, Hargeisa. The choice of the venue is a clear indication of the prevailing peace and stability in Somaliland and the confidence you all have to Somaliland. Thank you all, and I am looking forward to a very productive and valuable outcome from the workshop. Our journey to statehood, Somaliland's journey to statehood was an arduous process. The determination of our people to establish their own state was so overpowering, was so overpowering and transcended all obstacles upon the liberation of our ravaged country, uh, a country from the tyranny of Siad Barre. We inherited a war ravaged country in which tens of thousands of our people had been killed, many thousands injured, and the main cities of our country, like Hargeza, Burgo, Gabile, almost entirely has been destroyed. To fully grasp the terrors and the horrors visited upon our cities, just imagine and fully look to the today at what is happening on Mariupol and other cities in Ukraine. Despite the infrastructure has been destroyed and Somaliland's territory extensively have been mined, millions of internally and externally displaced people were starting to return home and they needed support. During the struggle against the regime, Sia Barre, the dictator, deliberately exploited clan divisions in an effort to remain, to retain his power. There were, therefore, parties of Somaliland regions, regions that did not support the SNM during the struggle against that regime. The people in these regions were naturally worried. Trust and confidence building was essential and help the key to be lost to get a lasting peace. So we prioritized reconciliation and peace building. Therefore, the SRM tasked the traditional leaders and elders with the responsibility to heal the rift among the Somaliland communities who was on the opposite side of the struggle against that regime. This strategy was pursued with vigor and established the foundation upon which the peace and stability of Somaliland stands up to today. In the early days, the SRM held a series of localized peace conferences that paved the way for a national meetings in Berbera in February 1991. That conference turned to set the scene for a larger 
national conference to be held in Bruho in April and May 1991. These series of localized meetings were instrumental in trust building, reconciliation, and cemented peace among the people of Somalia. It is often accepted that Somaliland has succeeded in terms of reconciliation and state building largely due to the sustained focus on resolving issues of community level before attempting to tackle issues at a national level. Communities were allowed to resolve immediate disputes and agree terms of the future discussions before moving to tackle issues on regional and then to national levels. Somaliland's reconciliation peace building process was largely homegrown, locally financed and organized as a result of initiatives taken by diverse range of actors with broad support from the grassroots. At the Borough Grand Conference, all Somaliland clans, their traditional leaders, politicians, intellectuals and businessmen participated on a voluntary basis. The funding came primarily from the Somaliland communities and diaspora with women playing a fundamental role in fundraising. The most consequential decision reached by the Borough Conference was the restoration of Somaliland independence. <laughs> the other important resolutions made by the conference included mandating given to SNM to form a government, a government to run the country for two years with its German Abdurrahman Ahmed Ali as the president and vice German Hassan Isa Jama as vice president. The central committee of the SNM became the national parliament with 30 server cities allocated to the Aulal and Seoul region. The democratic culture of SNM, even before the liberation of the country, played an important role in, the, in its acceptance to run the country only for two years. During the time of liberation front, uh, as a liberation front, SRM had elected five chairmen, with each one succeeding his predecessor in a peaceful transfer of power. It had its executive committee, which acted as a government and a central committee acting as a parliament. It had a singular chain of command, even though its arms were located in various parties of the country and were supported logistically and financially by different communities. Immediately upon becoming the government, the SNM government found itself in a dire financial situation. The communities that provided support to the Liberation Front during the struggle now needed support from the government. There was a constant tension as the government was unable to provide the basic services such as the salary of the troops. Subsequently, when the division within the SNM flared 
into conflict as happened in 1991 and 94, the system of customary leadership kicked in and enabled the elders to apply traditional conflict resolution procedures. The actual process of state building in Somaliland started with the Borama Conference. The Borama Conference was very different from that which was held in Borama. Unlike the Borama Conference, which was primarily concerned with the reconciliation, peace building, and determination of the future of Somaliland, the purpose of the Borama Conference was established to establish the system of governance that would be employed in the future. The Borama Conference lasted more than five months, which allowed the stakeholders to debate a wide range of topics of national level concerning to address the stakeholders' future government and their administration, how it will look future. Burma Conference achieved a great deal, including making the transition from the military government to a civilian one. The conference showcased the Somaliland negotiation model, which tends to work on the basis of consensus is the best foundation of decision making. The major achievements of that conference were include Somaliland Community Security and Peace Charter, the National Charter, a system of government after studying and debating different systems of government, the conference finally agreed on an executive president and bicameral parliament of equal members, 75 seats at that time. The formation of the government, the SRM handed power over the Gurti to enable the election of the president and the vice president. The formation of the government with Mohammed Haji Ibrahim Igal as a president and Abdurrahman or Al Farah as vice president. The institutionalization of the Gurti as a national political body with a role in creating peace building and, milita and, mediating and mediation. The disarmament and demobilization of the SNM fighters and Kalan militias. In that conference, both the SRM fighters and Klan militias were given an equal rights. Borama conference marked an enormous step in the establishment of the government that has persisted up to today. It's my pleasure today to have some of my senior participants in that Burma conference and the other local conferences who started in 1991 from all the regions. Let me introduce you our Minister of Information, Master Kore. At that one, in 1991, he was a young lieutenant from the Siyadrach regime when the government failed. And the first weeks of his fall, that uh, failure of the government, he came to his region, Lasaro, and passed it to Hargeisa. And he was one of the first personalities who have the courage to come and to discuss and participate in discussions with the SNM. His cousin, his counterpart at that time, who was the opposite side, was one of the leaders 
and the commanders of our SRM forces, who was an old and experienced Colonel Mohammed Gahin, the Minister of the Interior. <laughs> they were the first personalities who were sitting together on opposite sides at that time. The other person I'm introducing you is Muhammad, uh, the, Abdullah Muhammad Ali, our, our uh, ex uh, foreign minister. He was an SRM veteran, and at that time, he is also from the eastern regions, and he was the intellectuals who at that time were leading that meeting is in the far remote villages. Conference between Kore and Commander Kahi. It's my pleasure to introduce to you today our very experienced journalist who was only maybe our few journalists who were in the combat zone, a veteran of SNM and the president of the Veteran Association in 1991 at that time, who was one of the main tools and organizations who were going to mediate between the SNM and the other militias and the leader is Master Yusuf Abdi Gabobe, who is still here today. It's my pleasure to have all my colleagues at that time. At that time, I was the Minister of Interior, and all of them were helping me, and they were facilitators to make all these decisions. They were the people who were all the time advising with the Gurti and harmonizing the cultural and the customary law and the government, the decisions of the government. The system of Somaliland government has since evolved from class based system to one of the multi party democracy in a new constitution which was approved by referendum on May 31, 2001, by 97.1 percent of our population. Somaliland has had five presidents since 1991. Each one of them elected on a peaceful basis. The last three were elected in a transparent, peaceful, one person, one vote, democratic elections. All the power has been transferred by a peace, in a peaceful condition. In addition to a peaceful process of the presidential elections, successful elections have also been held for local governments. December 2002, November 2012, and May 2021. And the lower house of the parliament, September 2005 and May 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, peace and f peace and functioning state institutions has opened up to the space for economic development and growth. As a nation of entrepreneurs, the, some, the private sector quickly flourished. Today, the private sector constitutes almost 90% of our GDP. It is the intention of the government to nurture and to facilitate the growth of our private sector, which is the main engine of our economic growth. I would like to highlight the following as the major lessons we learned from our journey to statehood. Peace is the foundation upon which state building and economic development are anchored. Homegrown peace and national reconciliation at the grassroots level is more sustainable than internationally driven imposed peace. SNM policy of non-recrimination against the non-SNM communities enabled meaningful dialogue between the adversaries, in which communities are supported 
the Burr regime were able to play a genuine part in negotiating the terms of peace and the future of a government. That an act of kindness, even to your enemies, is better than revenge. In a gesture of that goodwill and human decency, SNM not only allowed thousands of refugees and regimes military forces to have to leave their country peacefully, but provided with provisions. Nearly 1,000 soldiers from the Siadbar regime, who were from Somalia, has been allowed to move to go freely to their country with logistical support in the hands of General R. And that was negotiated by the SM elders and leaders in Burgo. That the nation is bigger than the individual or group of power to an elect civilian government. SNM was only the National Liberation Front in Africa that voluntarily handed over power to the civilian administration peacefully and willingly. Thus, gaining the confidence of those that had, did not support it during the liberation of the struggle have also supported them for building the government institu institutions in Somalia. A resilient and determined people can overcome an enormous challenge. After 31 years of independence, Somaliland, with limited international support and enormous needs and challenges, is thriving and capable of managing its own affairs. The private, the private sector, the private sector is the main engine of economic growth. And the role of the government is to nurture the private sector through provision of conducive environment, targeting on the right amount of international aid is far better than an overwhelming and unaccountable aid which only breeds corruption and a source of conflict. Thank you very much.